I think they are. I'm well. I'm well, thank you. How was your week? Uh, productive. A little crazy. My, uh, my wife got poison ivy. So it's been... Sorry to hear. A little... I'm not... So... I'm just uh, meeting a bunch of people. Everyone is coming in sort of at the same time, which is nice. That was a good meeting last week. It was very enjoyable. Barry, what happened to your beard? <laughs> I, I had a meeting with my kids, and so I shaved it off before. Oh, I liked it. Thank I, you. Oh. Uh, just tell me that was your brother, right? No. <laughs> um, Hi, Barry, Ilsa. Hi, Ilsa. How are you? I'm back. Uh, I have to ask you something later. <laughs> when oh. you. Of course. Welcome, we're all sort of gathering. Um, I did start the meeting on record and I'll do a more formal introduction in a little bit when we get some more people. I just wanna welcome everybody and of course, uh, thank, it, it's nice to see people coming back. So very nice. That's what moves me to make art. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ilsa, where are you from? Where Where are you now? I'm actually from Berlin, Germany. Oh, is that what you're asking? Where I was living? Um, and where are you now? In Kroten on Hudson. Oh, that's correct. I remember. Yes. I used to live up in Suffern, and I do a lot of outdoor landscape painting. And so I would mostly be on that side, but I would go to the other side and paint the... Uh, you know, the very beautiful cliff there. Just, like, all there. I, I don't do landscapes that much, no. Are you talking to me? Yes, I'm just saying I know the area. It's quite beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. I wish there was a landscape artist. I'm not very good with landscapes. <laughs> so, but the Hudson is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yeah. It is. And welcome everybody. I'm still admitting some people. Um, and so Barry, I have one question then since we're not really started yet. Um, I think we should pay something for each session or how does that work? Or, um, or is that more donation or what is the thing on this? <laughs> oh, thank you so much for, uh, for saying that. That's very sweet of you. And yes, we operate on a donation basis. Um, so if you go to our website, you'll see many different ways to pay. Um, if you're on Facebook, there's an Eventbrite for this where you can get a free ticket or you can pay $10 for a ticket or of course buy multiple ticket tickets. And indeed, artists have contacted me and accept credit cards so we can take any amount you want to contribute. We consider it all donations and we try and make this available to everyone. You know. Right, right. And, I, I and there's something which says $9 a month. That's something different um, on your website. Yes. Yeah, so we have an old website and then a newer one. So that's something from our past. But certainly, since we have an open format, if you decide to pay $100 or $90 a year, it's sort of your choice, which is okay. Totally Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I will read it up, okay. I hate to talk about money, but we need it anyway, right? <laughs> One hates to talk about business, but. Well, all, all nonprofits are in very difficult times now. I know, I'm aware of that, yes. Uh, sort of the unique thing about us is quite recently, the ATOA had started to get a very good attendance. And we had, by donation, quite a good revenue for our talks 
and it, we were really gaining momentum. Now that's that's nothing to lose compared to people getting sick, but um, uh, this this is our sort of answer to what's happened. And I think going forward, even when we have future talks one day down the road, I think we're going to keep these virtual talks. It makes it accessible for some that it isn't otherwise, and it gives a casual air for artists to present as well, informally. Mm -hmm. I love that idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I never, I got your mails all the time, but I never, going to the city was always on Mondays would be very hard to do. So this is great for people who live outside. Yeah. <laughs> very nice. So I will, I will start formally. Um, again, everybody welcome. This is Artist Talk on Art. Uh, we are a 5013C nonprofit. And we've been around since 1975, um, over 45 years. Uh, I myself have just been a small part for the last four or five years. And I, my name is Barry Kostrinsky. I'm the president. I want to welcome other board members that I see here. I see uh, Jackie, Roberto, and I see Mitch. Um, these are people who do a lot of work behind the scenes to make these things go on. And uh, they have their time and their which, uh, uh, this is our Monday night artist open studios, virtual studios, um, where you can share from home. You can share about your art. Um, you can share something you have. Of course, you can use the screen share option. Um, we're all getting used to the technology. So um, if you need help, we can. Then again, you can take an object and sort of hold it up. In mind, if you do that, if you hold it up to the screen, let it stay there a while, 30 seconds. Uh, people like to look at it uh, once it's in position. Uh, we do sort of a, uh, a random go round here where I'll ask an artist to go ahead and share. Of course, if you don't want to, you don't have to share. Um, and then we just sort of go one by one. After each artist talks, or even along the way, anybody feel free to chime in and ask a question. Uh, and that's how the dialogues evolve. And I found, I think this is our fifth, maybe our sixth one. And they've all been pleasant, all been fun. Uh, nice to see new faces and old faces to it. And feel free to share about anything, uh, even if you shared it before, because you always have new people and participants. So uh, if everybody's uh, cool, I'll just sort of uh, uh, pick a person and go with it, if you're all fine with that. Elaine, Elaine Weinstein, uh, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Are you Hi. from San Francisco? Um, no, actually, I'm, I'm just trying this for the first time, and I couldn't resist this background because I was actually uh, raised in the Bay Area, and uh, I did leave my heart in San Francisco, so. I'm kind of enjoying that right now. <laughs> Hi, Jacqueline. Hello. So, Elaine, tell us a little bit about your art. Oh, golly. Um, my art. Well, let's see. I was supposed to be having a one-person show right this time. It's not happening. Um, wow. My work is very figurative, and uh, but always with a little whimsy. Uh, I think that I'm basically a happy person were to come to realize, and I, my work tends to be rather joyful. Um, I just started a new painting today. It's a portrait of two women, and I've been finishing up a lot of things in my studio. Um, I do have one picture of something that I just took. Let's see if I can hold it up. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. Uh, I turn it this way and put it here. Hmm. I can't see myself on the screen, but a little, a little bit closer, higher, a little, a little higher, bit, little that, and a little closer at the same okay. time. Yeah. Perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> okay, so those are Chinese brushes. I don't know if the color is good, but I just finished it. I will. I signed it, and I will put it away. And um, the portrait that I, I guess I did photograph. I always find my work. I like it very much when I first start, 
And then I sort of tighten things up. So I'm, I, I'm trying to photograph it as I go. Uh, oops, I lost it. Oops. <laughs> anyway, I was going to give you a real studio visit. I was going to walk around my studio with my phone. Let's see. But I didn't expect you to call on me so quickly. So here, this is the start of these two women. Well, that's lovely. Yeah, it's sort of loose looking now, but I'll end up probably tightening it up a little bit. So we'll see. Anyway, it, it brought, grabbed me and it made me go right to the studio this morning. So I was happy. There you That's have nice. it. Yeah. That's my practice. Um, I think being an artist in, during this time is great, especially if you have art supplies that you can use and can be creative or just take anything that's around and do something, you know? That's right. We're yeah. lucky. Lucky. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you, Elaine. You're Any, welcome. Any thoughts? Um, I think her work is uh, lovely. It's going to be exciting to see how it moves forward. And I agree, as I have spoken with some of the artists I represent, like Robert, and I don't know if, if Robin is here, Yes, about, oh, hi, Robin. Hi, Robert. Hi, um, we've talked about how um, being in this environment um, has really uh, given artists an opportunity to just really start to discover uninterrupted and prolifically create art. And I've seen that with a lot of different artists, especially the ones I'm working with, and um, how we've talked about in other pandemics, you know, um, great inventions have been made by scientists, you know, in the history, in the past. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, I, I like what she said about finding whatever you can and, and, and creating art from it. So anyway, that was what I wanted. That's, that's my two cents. <laughs> right. uh, the question to you is, do you make art? Oh, uh, thanks for asking that. Um, not too many people know this. I do have an artwork of mine, um, but uh, I am uh, gratefully in the business of, art, business of art for 24 years and uh, making a living doing what I love representing artists. So that's what I do. And two of the artists I represent are with us right now. Uh, that would be Robert Sherman and Robin Walker. Robin, uh, my artist, Catherine Gould, uh, is with a, with a patient right now, so couldn't, couldn't be here today. Welcome, Amy. Very nice to have you. And Amy reached out to us. And again, everybody reach out to your friend. Thank you, Barry. Yeah, it's so nice to have you join us. I know Jackie had a question she wanted. No, to I was I was just going to um, add to both Elaine and what art client services. What is your name? Your name isn't up here. What is your name? Amy Delaporte. What? Amy, Amy. Delaporte. Oh, okay. uh, a, and re, uh, you know, reinforce what both of them said, um, even the, to the point that Elaine said, if you have supplies, but even if you don't have supplies, which I didn't when I got here, I didn't expect to be here, but I managed to like pull stuff together. And I, you know, I find that I'm really enjoying doing these mono prints, kind of learning as I go, because I've not really done them before. And I just what, what you said, you know, you have the time and the space and the, and you just do. And I look forward to it every day or every other day to do another one. Anyway. That's, that's very nice. And Jackie, I think that's a perfect lead um, into you if you'd like to present now. Well, I'll sh um, sure. This is the last one I did. I just put it on Instagram also. And I'm at the beach, by the way, for those who don't know. So mostly <laughs> I'm just doing things in my atmosphere. The sky, very simple. Well, I do minimal work, minimal, minimalist work anyway. But this is my, can you see it? Beautiful. Uh, oh, yeah. Hold it a little bit, Jacqueline. Hold it up. And now a little bit to the side. Can you go your left? Yeah, a little bit more left. Left. OK. okay. Um, and drop it down just an iota. There you go. It's beautiful. It's the sea, sky, and that's a mono print. For some reason, I it's, can't. It's a, it's a mono print. And the, you know, you, oh wait, okay. Can you see it? Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's it. Hi, Robin. 
what I'm finding, you know, the, one of the reasons I never really enjoyed print making, because I'm a painter, I like the immediacy of knowing what I'm doing and being able to control it. You don't really have that much control with printing, at least I don't, maybe, you know, master printers might. And it, while that was frustrating to me before, in this period, I kind of liked the idea of not knowing exactly what I'm gonna get and keep working on it and working on it. And then, and then the drying process, uh, last night, these colors were not there. But this morning, after it was fully dried, a lot of the blues and a little bit of yellow came out. Anyway, so you can see, I'm having fun. <laughs> are you <laughs> using gorgeous. oil paint? No, these are water-based uh, print, print paints. Huh. And uh, then the other thing that I did just recently, it was one image, but I kept it, you know, you, you work on a little piece of plexiglass with a drawing underneath. So you paint on the plexiglass, but as soon as you print, you know, the paint is gone. But this is the one time I used the same drawing three times because I was kind of liking it. Well, this was my first one. Oh, and then, wow. Yeah. Then this was my second one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then my third, see, they got progressively more uh, ink, um, you know, painted. This is my yeah. favorite. So anyway, they're nice, like, they're nice as a uh, grouping also. So that's, I mean, I can show you more, but I think that's enough. That's what I'm up to right now. Those are my, pretty much the ones I've just done. Um, are those ghost images or did you repaint them? No, no, these are the, these are the, they're not ghost images. They're, uh, you know, what I'm doing is I'm using the same plate and yeah. I'm keep painting on it for the, for this print. Okay. When, but each time I print it, the ink comes off and then put more ink on. You know, if you, if I'm not satisfied with the image, I just keep putting more ink. And well, then you get, you get more complexity too. Yes, absolutely. And so, you know, usually I think with mono print, you are supposed to use wet paper. And I did initially. And somehow I moved on to not wetting the paper. And when you don't wet the paper, you can do more layers and then get this kind of an effect. Uh, wow. Because the paper is, is not wet, it's not falling apart. Anyway, so that's why I say I'm learning sort of my, it's probably my own process that nobody else will ever do. But that's kind of what I do, even with my pastels and my painting. I evolve a process that works for me with materials that work for me. And I, I try to keep it really simple. So here I am with this, this uh, new process. <laughs> so I'll Wonderful. let someone else the floor. Jacqueline, have you ever tried Arches 88 paper? For, print, for the prints? For printmaking, especially well, for mono printing. I haven't, but I'll, I mean, because this is kind of the first time I'm doing print. I'm not using the best paper. Actually, the last few I showed you were um, on the really junky paper. It's not print paper. But then the one I showed you last, I mean first, that's on the good paper. That's, um, that's uh, what do you call it, Stonehenge. So the, specifics, the specifics of Arches 88, it, it has no sizing. So whenever okay. you do, if you're doing mono printing, it sucks the ink up right into the paper. Oh, that's, 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 on the surface. oh wow. That's, so, you know, that's interesting because I'm using the Stonehenge paper, you know, on the later prints. And now that's very interesting because I see where it doesn't sink. And that's why I'm kind of repainting the plate more more than one you know several times which i'm kind of enjoying but i'll keep that in mind i did not know i didn't know i just i, I went online to blick and i just got better paper than i was using before it was like more like you know print paper print for you know uh computer print paper really junk but you know i was just trying it out but i'll i will definitely look into that thank you sure. thank you thank you jackie some great <laughs> thoughts in there and uh if you don't mind, Robin, I, Robin Walker, I see some beautiful things behind you. Are you, uh, would you like to share with us? Um, I could do that, let me, this is my uh, home studio, which is uh, kind of small and so it's, it's uh, here's, a, here's a quick roundabout. Wait a minute, 
the door. Uh, mm. There's the there there's the roundabout, and then uh, the things behind me. This is my painting wall, and these are some uh, paintings that I've uh, finished fairly recently. And the one behind me is the one I'm kind of still working on. That's called uh, "Not Afraid of Murder Hornets." <laughs> so, That's a great title. Yeah, oh, you know, uh, uh, right. current, current events, right? Right. Yes. Right. So I mean. There's another one over there. These are acrylics on canvas. And that's what I've got. That's what I've got hanging up right now. Just trying to in in process. Interesting. Oh. They look great. Yeah, thank you. They do. Very colorful. I finished one called Why Did I Watch the News? <laughs> yeah. That's also a really good one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you have Why Did I Watch the News available to us? Yeah, I do, actually. Uh, I don't know how, how to do any of this. I'm, I'm sort of one of these uh, technological incompetents. I'm still a 20th century guy. We'll see. <laughs> I've got my camera in front of it. I don't know if so that, you Yeah. Are we looking at the top one or the bottom one? The bottom one. Oh, the bottom one. Lower your camera a little bit. There we go. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Definitely, definitely see the virus hanging out of the edge of that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, all, all the other people there, but I know for me, this confinement, I produced more work than I've ever produced in my life in the same <laughs> same time period it's just flowing out of me uh, i can't seem to even stop it i'm growing out out of room in my studio <laughs> that's, true. that's true he's been painting a lot a lot a lot and we're uploading his website and robert's and robin has also been very prolific uh, both of you guys are amazing how much art you're creating all the time yeah well, i'll tell you one thing i miss however is uh deadlines <laughs> I, I, I'm really good with deadlines, so you know now. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a good point. Robin, let let me ask you: uh, Which artists would you uh, say either influenced you, or you respect their style, or you see uh, your work lines up with it? Um, I've got I've got two on my list of people that I'm always enamored of. Um, not that my stuff looks like it, but it has things in common, and that would be Henry Matisse and David Hockney. Yeah. And my uh, mm -hmm. my desire in painting is to get simpler and simpler and more and more immediate, um, mm. in a way like the paintings of a child. You know, mm. so, you know, a child can make a few marks and have, in their mind anyway, made an entire world. Wow. And, and I, I, I've always thought that people are always afraid to ask children, what is it? As though they might insult the child. Yeah. When really it's the greatest compliment because then the child gets to tell you everything about their world. That's a good point. And, uh, and so I, I, uh, I've endeavored to, um, it's, it's kind of a, a, a mysterious thing because I love art brute, you know, and naive painting. But the problem is that the more you paint, the less brute you get. And it's hard <laughs> to maintain the sense of wonder and immediacy. Mm. Well, I don't know if you, Picasso said somewhere along the line, it took, his, it took him his whole life to go back to being a child with his yeah. work. You know, because right. at 15, he was a master. And then he had to go back to get, you know, more and more simple. And yet, I mean, I don't think you can really be simple until you've been a little complicated. You got to kind of work away from it, that. It, it gets more and more complicated to be simple. Exactly. <laughs> simple, <laughs> yeah. but because the simple is not simple. That's that. Yeah. All right. Okay. But um, and I I did a, a short stint with um, with uh, third graders at the Met. It's a program. It's called Art um, Art Works. Uh, I'll tell you, walking around with six or eight third graders 
and they have already been primed on a, a, a bunch of uh, pieces from the Met in their classroom. And then after a month, they come into the Met and then take them around and they, it was amazing. It was the best, wow. thing. what an experience. Like they saw things that, I mean, I've looked at painting my whole life. <laughs> I, they're fantastic. And that particular age, I guess, uh, I mean, I don't have children, so I don't know, but that age group, they're just past being like real babies and they're not quite like smart Alex. And they say, <laughs> and they just, they have such insights that it, it's such a treat. So I agree with you on children. I love to hear what they have to say. It's yeah. before they, they find out that they know everything and, and exactly. older people know nothing. <laughs> right. And before, and before they're too embarrassed to give their opinion about something, you know, I mean, these kids just said whatever came into their head. And many times it was quite um, profound, really, you know, really insightful. Nice. It was great. Nice. Sometimes, sometimes it's the challenge of an artist to go through that self-awareness stage, that puberty stage, that awkward stage where you then have to uh, learn something and then eventually try and come back to a childlike state, which as you said very well, simplicity is not simple, um, mm -hmm. not easy to get to as we look around you, look at all the things, not a lot of simplicity here. Mm -hmm. I do want to move forward and I want to let Robert, uh, Robert Sherman, go ahead and continue. And thank you, Robin Walker, for sharing. Thank you very you much. Sure? I, I think the work just jumps graphically. The color, I see the shape. I see simpli simplicity, but complexity in sort of little micro detail or drawing as well. So yeah. interesting work, uh, definitely bites the eye. Um, uh, Mr. Sherman, welcome. Yes, yeah. hello. You guys are, you're from, where are you located? San Luis Obispo, California. Hmm. I just moved here. Uh, I lived in Ecuador for a few years. And I came back to this country about a year ago. And he wow. had a gallery in Ecuador too. Yes, I did. Uh, <laughs> I uh, lived in San Francisco most of my artistic life. And I went to the San Francisco Art Institute Studied with Deben Corn, Bischoff, Oliveira, all those guys, James Weeks. Uh, but uh, I always knew that uh, their path was not mine. Here are some of my recent paintings. This one's called, if you see it all right, it's called Ladies Night at the Bathhouse. What does it say the title again? Ladies Night at the Bathhouse. Oh. <laughs> This is uh, two women on the love seat with shadows. Right away, Robert, I'm going to say welcome to the 21st century. You're doing quite a good job of. <laughs> well, yes, he is. Yes, I he is. See, I didn't see any belly buttons, fingers, you know, no crazy views. You're doing a great <laughs> job, and it is challenging. Um, uh, I guess, odd question what's your inspiration or what's your desire or intention? in your work, for either yourself or viewer? Well, there was a time when I painted the dark side of life, and I made a series of very political paintings, which actually cost me all my days. Uh, and I, I feel like today is a time when we, everyone knows the dark side, everyone who reads the news. And that for uh, an artist, for me, I feel it's very important to give comfort and hope and try and put people into the moment. Understand that it really doesn't matter what happens tomorrow because life is right now. And so I, these are meditative paintings. You don't see them all. Uh, let me see if I can give you a good example. Well, take this one, for instance. You may see, I don't know what you, you see, but you may see one big figure. But when you get close, there's all kinds of things. They operate in layers. You can and see prisons. different things. And prisons also, Robert, prisons. Prisons. Yeah, but I, I feel like I try to paint them multidimensional. I say they're like a television series where there's a new show every time you look. 
And in fact, uh, one of my friends bought one and he lived in New Orleans. He called me a few weeks later. He said, I'm really mad at you. I said, why, what did I do? He said, well, I hung your painting over my television set and I can't watch television anymore. I'm always <laughs> watching your program. <laughs> which made me very happy. <laughs> That's so great because I've always thought art is foremost entertainment. Well, nice. I don't think of it as entertainment so much as developing perception. That's what I'm trying to do. Certainly, certainly different than, uh, than TV in your friend's uh, case. Yes. That's right, Robin. <laughs> yes, yeah. you're quite yeah. right. I feel a relationship to your work, by the way. I, I, I feel quite drawn to it. Oh, we got, we got color in common, don't we? We certainly yes. do. Yeah. Yeah. And in a, in a sense, uh, sort of the, the character of the images. Figures, yeah. Abstracted figures. Yeah. yeah. It's nice to see someone that you can feel that way about. <laughs> no, it's nice, yeah. Are you in New York? In California, I'm uh, south of you in uh, uh, the San Fernando Valley. Wow, wow. all these well, Californians, this is amazing. <laughs> Robert, Robert, draw us back a minute to when you were younger. Tell us something about your work when you were younger, if you were or did artwork. Uh, oh, I did, I've done it. Well, I was raised in a small town in Arkansas. There was no art education. There was no art to be seen. Art was a print of a flower with a green mat to match the green sofa <laughs> and green walls and everything else. Very Matisse if you just throw in the red. Right. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. true. <laughs> so what I would do was I just drew. I didn't know why I drew. I drew because I felt compelled to, I guess. And I didn't even know what art was. And then when I was uh, a senior in college, my parents for graduation gave me a group trip to Europe. And for the first time I went to a real museum. Wow. And I was stunned. And I went back totally changed. From that moment on, I painted. I started painting immediately when I got back. Uh, I've never stopped. No In fact, I couldn't stop, it's an addiction. <laughs> it's a good it's more addiction. expensive than heroin. It probably would have been better. <laughs> 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 very nice. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Got to find a way to buy canvases on the street now. Uh, <laughs> old, yeah. old doors, old objects. That's the way yeah. to go. Right. There you You're go. Free. I'm going to move along. And Michael, Michael Kras Krasowitz. Um, I see a beautiful studio. Home studio. Michael. Home studio. I'm from Long Island, New York. And uh, I w I'm thinking a lot about conversation. It's really interesting because I was thinking like Elaine said that her piece isn't finished, you know? And I was thinking, cause I've been really interested in like different states of a piece. And I think we have the opportunity now to record all the different states as a piece evolves. And what I find is that my initial impression, the first five minutes is actually sometimes better than what I try to do is I try to resolve the painting over time. So what I do is I take pictures of everything, each state, and I almost think of it as that's the work. You see all the different states, because I think that, you know, sometimes we nudge it, we want to fix it. I always think I fix it too much, and then I have to go back and unfix what I fixed, you know. <laughs> so I brought some stuff up, what I'm working on. Uh... <clears throat> Hi, I'm having a hard time um, getting the video. My video? Yeah, mine went away as well. Oh, I don't, is my, in just my picture or? Oh, that, that, no, it's, it's back for me. That, that looks good. You may want to try uh, looking on your screen, seeing the different buttons to uh, get views that are either in the grid or you can pin. There's an option to pin the person that speaking, Michael's holding his up perfectly. You can yeah. see it. Where the point is two and three dots, you hit the three dots, you can pin his video, and it'll become just him on the screen with scroll bar on the top for other participants. Um, wow, that's interesting. When I, I when, I, when I say start this video, start video, it doesn't, 
like an error message comes up or something. Yeah. Uh, if, you go, if you go to the stop video, there's a little carrot to the right. Click the little carrot and it gives you a few. Uh, stop, stop video? Don't, don't click stop video. Click the carrot just to the right of stop video. Oh, yeah. It says integrated webcam. Yeah. Are you using that? Yeah. Is that selected? That should work, or else maybe if you click video settings, it'll give you another selection. Okay, thanks. And this is really neat, uh, Barry. Thank you for sharing that with me because now I can see we have 15 participants. Yeah. <laughs> yes, welcome everybody. Michael, that looks very interesting. <clears throat> if Michael speaks, we'll see him on the screen. If so. you double click on Michael's uh, thumbnail, he'll stay stuck there. I have. Oh, a, okay. A, I only get whoever is speaking that's on the screen. Like right now, you're on the screen, Robin. Yeah, you need to double click Michael's thumbnail. Or you need to pin it. Or you need uh, to pin it. Anything I always have trouble with, too. Let's see, where is Michael? Michael, Michael do you have titles for these? I, I don't. Uh, oh, got it. Yep. Hmm. I, uh, so my, my work process is it's intuitive painting. It starts with uh, automatic drawing. Mm. And colors. Uh, I've been working with color and I, you know, I don't have titles on purpose because I don't want to imply, I can interpret what I think the paintings are, but I don't want to imply it. I, I want them to kind of stand on their own. And, you yeah, know, because um, your paintings very much are sort of like storytelling, aren't they? I think more and more it seems to be uh, like organically happening, happening that there's some kind of narrative. But I, I prefer that the, the viewer finds the narrative as opposed to me. I understand that. Imposing it. Did he nice. start, start with a uh, preliminary drawing of any kind or, or you just start with the canvas and the paint and you just go? I start with the line work. Yeah, there's no, I don't want to have a, uh, I, I, I can sketch, but that I consider independent. Yeah. No, so you go directly onto the canvas with your paint. Right, and I'll start with the line work and usually, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. let it develop from there. Right. Yeah. Um, one of the things, one of the things I've been doing, which is kind of interesting, is I've been doing this Instagram live, and I've okay. been painting live on Instagram. Hmm. And that's another part. It's like performance. It's I consider a performance piece. Wow. Yeah. Because it, and, and it's very interesting how that works. You, I just again, I start with a blank canvas and start working, and then I talk back and forth to whoever comes on. Like people might come on for 30 seconds and then they go and... But how do, you, how do you get filmed on Instagram? How does that, has somebody taking it for you or? No, Instagram has a, a thing called stories. Yeah, I know, but I don't know how it works. And, so. Well, this is at the top, on the top bar, there's a thing you can click a story and you can, do, and you can post that story to Instagram. But you can also do Instagram live in the stories and you click on it and it runs as long as you want and as you're like you can do 30 minutes and but it's really interesting because you don't know if people are going to stay for two seconds or right or yeah. Yeah. michael that's great thank you for sharing because i've been researching for my artists as well different ways to have uh more of an online presence and um i've been researching instagram and some things i'm working on with uh my artists uh, to be continued when we have it ready to announce but thank you. I was wondering about how the Instagram live filming would be. So you can actually work back and forth when someone is on there. They can actually say something to you and you can respond back. Well, they can text, but you can also add a second person. So it splits the screen. And then on okay. the top, I'm sorry about it. If I'm going too long, cut me off. Um, on the top, it'll be you. And on the bottom, it's your person you're talking to. And you can have an ongoing conversation. And you know, like Vogue Italia is on every day and many magazines and publications do like a new thing. And it's very interesting that this, this is a new form of dialogue. Yes. Which is, which is, and what my wife and I did a couple of weeks ago is uh, she's a dancer. So wow. what we did was we did a live thing where she was dancing and I was painting. Oh, I'm wow. Painting. That, was, that was really great, Michael. I was there for that. And, uh, I thought it worked really nicely. Yeah, thanks. It, I, we were really, really enjoying it. And it was interesting that when there was some kind of synchronicity, even though we weren't looking at each other. My What's your Instagram uh, title? What's your Instagram address? Uh, it's my last name, just oh. Krausowitz. 
And by the way, if anybody likes, there's a chat feature on the bottom. And you can type anything you like into everyone or individually. If you want to post uh, websites, uh, anything you have, anything you like at all, emails, anything you want to share, there's a chat feature you can hit. Um, Michael, interesting. And thanks for coming multiple times. That's One it. question. Yes. Harry. Uh, Michael, uh, can you just show one of your clothing? I went online. I love them. They're, they're fabulous. Oh, sure. So this is a, a, woman's, a woman's vest. Wow. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. The so way is that, is that all hand painted? Yeah. Yeah. What is the fabric? Um, this is a probably a cotton linen linen blend. Wow. That's great. That's great, Michael. Beautiful. So we have a whole line and we do uh I'm really I'm it's like I can use this for performance. So we used to have a an association with this this man had a uh, fashion shows on in Chelsea once a month. So mm. for about two years we did like four shows a year yeah. which was which was really interesting so i think it's an interesting way for uh like i'm always interested in figuring out how to bring the work into like the public sphere right and, and i think of it it's like it's a form it it, it it functions like graffiti i think it's like living graffiti or tattoos yeah. mm -hmm. it's walking nice. art walking art Oh, you have a piece Robin Walker is wearing and oh, showing. Thanks, Robin. Look, look, at, look at what I found. That is awesome. Oh, thanks. Man. That was at the Select Art. That was a fair that they used to have a fair. Well, they had it one year in uh, the old the D Center on 22nd Street. And we had, a, mm -hmm. we had an exhibition there. Put the, you know, the painting and the, and the clothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Was, uh, very nice. Thank you. Thanks, Robin. What kind of what kind of paint are you using? It's okay. That's that took me a while to figure out. The best paint, if you have, anybody wants to try it, is Jacquard fabric paint. J a q u a r d, and they make a fabric paint. They make it opaque, and they make a transparent, and they make a metallic series. Mm. And you can heat set it. So once you heat set it, you can you can wash it. But Have there's you also heat another set it with an iron or with an a iron. Soap? But there is a trick to the heat setting, if anybody ever does this. If you get what's called a silicon sheet, you have to put a silicon sheet between the iron and the fabric. Mm. If you don't, the fact that you could burn the, the, it'll turn the yellows icky and all these different colors, but the silicone thing distributes the heat. Huh. And I think it's just a cool thing, like if you have an art opening, you could wear one of your pieces. You could have, it, yeah. you could have it printed on, anything can be printed now. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, That's very very good. Good. Yeah. very good branding, and I like the way you're sort of integrating art. It's not just on a wall in a studio, it's performance. If you're using Instagram or whatever social media, if you're doing it on clothing, I know artists who do that. They paint on rocks, they paint on anything possible. It becomes very interesting. The clothing, on the other hand, as new of an idea as it is, that is an old idea. Everybody likes it. It's very hip, sort of always has been. And it's obvious how good those jackets look. I mean, that's, it's plain to see. So I think yeah. right now, great yeah. combination going on. Thank you. Um, let me move on. Uh, thanks, Michael. Uh, I'm going to go, Fran. Are you, uh, Fran, welcome back. Hey, uh, thanks, Barry. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Where are you again, Fran? You're in the city? I'm in Manhattan on the Upper West Side and uh, right now sitting in my studio. Um, and let's see. Uh, I'm going to get up some photos to show, or better yet, um, thanks for asking. Um, it's Great to be here and great to see everybody. Um, Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, I have been working on a series um, of 
self-portraits, a self-portrait a day. And Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Last time I was here uh, at the um, at the ATOA, uh, I showed those. So I think I'm going to show something a little different. I'm going to show some paintings. Um, nice. This is a series of paintings that I did that I call accidental encounters. So I can share my screen and show these. And then uh, I can show you one that I'm working on right now. So let me go share my screen. And here we go. Okay, can everybody see that now? Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah right. that's me. Mm. So this is a an oil painting. So all, most of what you'll see are oil paintings. Some are prints, but I'll describe them as they go. Um, so this is an oil on canvas, and it's 18 by 24. And um, in these accidental encounter paintings that I do, I like to... Um, this is probably one of the more literal ones where there's actually an accident happening in that the vase is falling. Um, I, I'm really captivated by painting objects that are falling or floating or flying. Um, so this is one, it's called Accidental Encounter. And um, I really like doing the reflections and the shiny surfaces. Okay, this is the next one. Um, this is called Nine Lives. So one of the thing, one of the other elements that these paintings have is a lot of um, toys. Sometimes they are um, from different cultures and different places around the world. So I like this idea of an accidental encounter between cultures. Um, this is called Leap Frog. And you can <laughs> see why. <laughs> I was trying to like lighten up a little bit in these paintings too. Sometimes I can fun. be a little heavy with my subject matter. Yeah, I wanted to have some fun. Whimsical um, is good. Whimsical is good. Thank you. This is called Juliana's Little Universe, and it's this is a, a one of my daughter's toys. These nesting universe balls. Um, this one is called, it's a watercolor actually, and watercolor with colored pencil. It's called, I call it fish tails. Um, What's the size of that? This, oh yeah, I've been giving sizes. Some of the others were much larger, but this is small. This is about 16 by, by 15 maybe. Uh. Um, this is called familiar reflections. And this one is also on the small side. Uh, I think it's, also like 17 or 18 inches maybe. Um, these dolls are from, from Latin America. Um, and here again, you can see my whole studio reflected in the vase. And I really like this idea of combining a still life with an interior, with a portrait of the artist in the studio, bringing everything together into one piece like this. And you can even see some of the other toys sitting up on the shelves. I like that little bit of mystery up there that you can't quite see what's going on. Um, yeah, it adds a lot of different dimensions to the artwork. Right, thank you. This one yeah. I called Falling in Love. Uh, when, my, when my husband and I met and we moved in together, it was like a lot of our stuff, <laughs> his stuff and my <laughs> stuff, all falling together. Uh, yes. But again, I, I, yeah. Your titles yeah. are very humorous and also um, it's a lot of them are very photographic like, you know, they're so fine, finely mm. painted. Right, right. Uh, and it's interesting in the photographs, they look even more photographic than the actual paintings do because when you see the real paintings, they're bigger and they're a little looser, but, but they do have that. I really like. I'm drawn to realism too. I love it. I'm captivated by making things look real. And I love this idea that are these things falling or are they frozen, suspended? Who knows? Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit of mystery again. This one I call Dahlia's Dilemma. Um, Brian, are you familiar with Nancy Margolis Gallery in the city? 
Nancy Margolis. That sounds so familiar. So I feel like maybe where is that gallery? Uh, my friend Melody Melody Provenzano shows there. Uh, uh -huh. Your work is really reminding me of her work. She does very similar collections of objects and does hyperrealism of sorts. In oh, what's, what was the name of the artist again? Uh, Mel Melody, M-E-L-O-D-I-E, -E, Provenzano. Uh -huh. I'm going to type it into the chat. But Nancy okay. Margolis Gallery, I mentioned because this, this art is right up the alley that she shows. Um, okay. So I'll put it in here. And if you don't get it from me, uh, I'll certainly, you could email me. But I'll, I'll Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm appreciate sorry. appreciate that. That's okay. Um, this one I call Close Encounter. And I had the thought in this painting, which is quite small. It's like uh, maybe 10 inches, uh, that I just wanted to show the reflection in this vase so that it was mysterious about what you were looking at. You know, where exactly is this distorted image? Um, it's just the portrait of me in my studio. Uh, it's another very large watercolor, large for me. It's like maybe 36 inches. Um, I call it borrowed time. Uh, and that is, yeah, reference to childhood and the clock and the things in nice. the past. Mm, nice. Thank you. Um, this one I call a twist of fate, and I think you can see why it's another watercolor with colored pencil. Um, I think I am going to, uh, let's see what else is in here. This one's called A Horse of a Different Color. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to stop screen share and I will show you what I'm working on right now because it's one of the paintings in this series. So grab it off the easel and I can show you what I'm working on. So let's see, here it is if you want to pin your video so you can see it. Um, this is a little different for me because it's acrylic and I'm not used to working in acrylic. So it's an experiment to see if uh, I will continue working in acrylic. So it's got my flying, falling vase, got me reflected in there and lots of marbles flying all over the place. Mm. Uh, I'll probably call it losing my marbles or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I will put a link to that page I just showed you in the chat so you all can see that at your leisure. But thank you for looking. Uh, always a pleasure. And thank, thanks for coming again. Anybody like to share their thoughts with Fran on, on her work? Yeah, I'd love to hear. <laughs> Um, I, I love the uh, the photorealism aspect. Um, I love what uh, the other wonderful associate said about um, you know it being very photographic in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and I like that it's um, I like the witty titles that you have and that it's whimsical and it's very happy. Um, mm -hmm. I my days off are usually Sunday, Monday, and I spend them with my daughter and my now four-year-old grandson. Yeah. And he's very much in, he loves the classical objects, objects. and toys. And uh, some of those make me think of him. And I mm -hmm. think also how uh, Robert and, and Robin and everybody was talking about the simplicity going back to childhood. When we have grandchildren yeah. or nieces or nephews or we work with children as you shared in the field trip, you can really see that. And um, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, really wonderful work and it's uh, very complicated yet it has a simplicity to it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Fran, hi, it's Mitch. How are you? Hey, Mitch. Hi, Mitch. Show us, show us your cat from the accessible, was it the accessible oh. art? Oh, yes. On. Okay, I will show yeah. that to you. That's how I really got to know you from seeing that. Okay. Them. Happy to. Uh, okay. I'm going to share screen again. And here. Uh, Oops. We got well, big. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, that's great. Here it's it a, is. Oh, wow. So this is, this is the painting Mitch is talking about. I thought I could expand it, but it seems to get very big when I blow uh, it up. Uh, yeah. um, oh, wow. And I, I like it. Yeah, so I like I that. You can see different parts of it. That's kind of cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. That's great. <laughs> how'd, yes, it is. how'd you get the cat to dress up in that clothing? Tricky. <laughs> it was tricky. Let me tell you. Is you know, this, an influence? Uh, well, um, yes. I mean, I love the Impressionists, period. But um, I chose that particular painting because I felt... So I had a whole story behind this that I was thinking about as I was painting it. I was trying to paint a scene of a Paris cafe that was supposed to be outside, although of course it's in my living room. So uh, it's not really outside. Um, and I and and Lautrec and his cafe liveliness just seemed like it would fit in this painting in particular. Um, but originally this was a woman and the model just left town without telling me and never came back and I was so annoyed at her and I tried finishing it from a friend who offered to pose and then it I just it just didn't work and I stuck it on my shelf and it was there for years just sitting on my you know painting racks and one night I had a dream that I would put this cat face on it and I woke up and I thought that's silly but that thought, you know, you know how I it is. It gets in there and I a patty. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So finally I one day I pulled it out and and, and did it. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. It's so, yeah. very nice. Thanks, Fran. Thank you for yeah. asking, Mitch. Sure. <laughs> Thank you very much. I like uh I like uh, inspired by something you learned or saw or experienced in a dream. Nice way to mm, start. Yeah. Uh, most people don't know it, but Carl Jung would draw and write up his dreams and the Red Book mm -hmm. is an illustration that is quite, quite the definition of outsider art and something very unique and interesting and not that well known. So, and a lot of artists draw inspiration, obviously the surrealists and Dolly from Dreams, but uh, mm -hmm. even thinkers, uh, uh, there's a great chess film, the player gets an inspiration in a dream, Stephen Jobs, I'm sure when your mind is quieted, that's sort of when mm -hmm. it plays softly and becomes a child, it can answer complex questions simply, it lets the static sort of quiet down. Thanks so much for sharing. That was, uh, uh, Fran, oh, always nice. I want to ask Ilsa, would you like to uh, share with us next? Oh, we can't hear you, Elsa. You're muted. You're on mute, Elsa. Can you uh, can you unmute? Mute? Let's see. Okay. You got um, it. Maybe I do it next time because I have to leave in a few minutes. Is that okay? Of of course that is. Yeah. Of and um, I'm also not really in my studio, but right now I'm just to say I work on very, very small work, which I can show you one or two. I think, didn't I show that last time? No? We have yeah. some new faces here. You did, but, oh, you know, feel free. Give us, uh, uh, you know, in business, they want to hear your elevator pitch, your short synopsis of what you do in the art world. Oh, what I do. Or okay, I'm, I'm mainly... Um, uh, for many, many years, I did mainly only woodcuts and limited edition uh, uh, artist books. I worked with poets a lot over the years. And we did, like, in collaboration, uh, this. Uh, at that time, we did the books that they would be called today artist, um, Libre Artist, I think, because those are the books like Picasso did, you know, which were not bound. They were just in boxes. And then the buyer at that time, Picasso's time, he bought those books and then had someone bind it in a way he would, the people would like it. And, but we did those books, um, I did those books with poets and I left them open because I liked that look of it. And I studied at Purchase College and worked with um, a wonderful woodcut artist, Antonio Frasconi. And I started to work on the art of a book there. So that was for many years, that's all I did. 
and I painted a little bit, but it wasn't so much my interest. And then I turned to paintings after several years, and I do now also uh, woodcuts, a lot of painted books, uh, mainly painted books, no more limited edition. Um, and all the poets I worked with, unfortunately, are not alive anymore. <laughs> I worked with um, a Russian poet, Joseph Brodsky, and uh, Galve Kinnell, who was a wonderful American poet, and a couple of others. And uh, so I stopped totally to do limited edition books with text. So I do just my own text and use text from, uh, from poets which are in the public domain, but mainly painted unique books. So that's what I do now, and woodcuts and uh, painting, a lot of uh, painting on uh, drop cloths with acrylics. But I don't have them here because my studio is in Peekskill, and I couldn't go there for a while, but soon I can again. Uh, but my print shop is here, so next time I can go to my print shop and show you guys how my print shop looks. So that's what I basically do. And um, I have a website, if you can check it out. It's it's www.ilseschreibernol.com. Nice. So that's in a nutshell. And I come from Germany, of course. I live. In, I, I went back and forth between here and Berlin for many years. And now I can't go anywhere. I'm here. <laughs> so, um, so that's about, in a nutshell, what I do. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, it, it always escapes my mind, but there's a German artist, um, the one who had the exhibit at the Aldrich, not about four years ago, where he oh, showed- Oh, Amson Kiefer. Yeah, that's yeah. my so, favorite artist. I have to say that. And all my paintings are, this is heavy surface texture and so are my books. I love his, his textures and surfaces. Yeah, he's now so famous that he's almost intimidating famous, you know. <laughs> I went there. I went there last year. I was so excited. I was looking for a studio. His old studio is in France, in some so. very small town. So we've tried to weird? find it, and he doesn't work there anymore. But then we found it, and it's it's like unreal, you know. It's beautiful, but you can't go in in anyhow. It's totally fenced in. But I admire him so much that for a while I think. Uh, you know, you go to stages in your life. And I went with my woodcutter. I admired so much Kate Kolwitz and the expression that I started to work in their style so definite that people would write me notes, thank you, Ilse, thank you, Kate Kolwitz, because <laughs> my woodcuts had so much taken mm. from her. So mm. now I think, and then for a while it was Amson Kiefer, but now I think it's myself. And that's pretty good. <laughs> so anyway. Very nice. I, when you mentioned the poetry and the sort of mixing in, and uh, I think often artists, uh, we don't mimic or copy another artist, but there are so many pools of thoughts that are in the ether that we all access. And so we access similar thoughts in the contemporary space, but also from 16th, the 16th century. They looked at nature the way you and I look at it today. Yes, differently, but in many ways, very much the same so we can access the same core that a van gogh did or that a rembrandt did mm -hmm. or that a 16th century and we can end up with similar styles there was an artist uh last week who i mentioned Cezanne to and he never heard of him and he looked it up and realized he's like linked with him because he did the vertical and horizontal balancing the compositional play and he got at it because naturally and organically not through learning about it historically. And so I think that's a, the method of how you come to things can be important. But either way, uh, uh, thanks for sharing, Ilsa. Uh, thanks. And yes, next time, have some objects, of course. Um, yeah, I have, I have some stuff. I put it together. I have a few things here, but they're tiny. But I'll do that next time. I got, I got enough time. OK. Very good. Um, uh, I, I do have a couple other uh, board members I want to introduce. I see uh, Mitch Pilnick, and then I'll go ahead and I'll give a short presentation because I'm an artist as well. But Mitch, welcome and thanks for uh, you know being a part. Hi, Mitch. I see you. Hi. Hey, hey Mitch. Uh, not too much to talk about that today. 
Oh, wait, wait a second. Well, that won't work, Mitch. You'll get reverberation. Shut one off. All right. Hold on a second. Okay. Are we good now? Yeah. All right. I'm not going to say much tonight because I had a root canal this afternoon. Oh, <laughs> so, oh no. But okay. So this is good. It took my mind off of everything. Um, I just want to mention um, that, um, you know, especially during this time, because I'm not an artist, but very much tapped in, as everybody knows, or some people know, um, how great Instagram is. And especially um, people like Michael Krasowitz, uh, Jackie Rada, um, uh, Fran. It's always great to see their um uh their posts on instagram and it's a really great connection so you know anybody wants as far as to put in as far as for chat you know what their instagram is or to let us know that's my only thing i really want to mention tonight thank you yeah uh, yeah good to know thank you yeah yeah roberta uh, mitch uh, i'm sorry mitch are you mitch Mitch, did you just connect with me on Facebook? No, we did, we we did. did right? Yeah, I have. How do we get out of here? Everybody to know, I have a Facebook art page and I have an Instagram page. Also, it's they're both called Visual Arts A R T S Events. Yeah, I do have a Facebook Mitch Pilnick personal page, yeah. but I don't post art on there. It's right, because you wrote me a message, but I, I couldn't get into that messenger. So I didn't know how to answer you. <laughs> Anybody, you know, who connects with me on Facebook, I always let them know, no art's going to be on my personal page. Check out right. art events. Yes, you told me that. Yes, yes. Okay. You know, especially during this time, you know, with Instagram, it's it keeps me very connected and in tune with uh, with artists and the art community out there. Yeah. And thanks. Right. thanks. Well, nice meeting you, Mitch. <laughs> Same here, Elsa. Yes. And Mitch has been oh, a enter. Oh, I see. Enter. Mitch has been a board member for many years. I don't know if it's six, seven, or eight years, but Mitch has done a lot, organized a lot of fascinating panels. A recent one with uh, MFA programs at Hunter, Columbia, uh, different schools around New York City, and it was a great comparison. Really, was a good one. Um, Roberta uh, is one of our wow. members. Roberta, you want to say a quick hi? Or? Well, hi. I really love these Mondays. It's wonderful. The artists are just exciting to listen to because then you understand some of their artwork. And I thank everyone. It's been really wonderful. Thank you, Roberta. Thank, thank you, Mitch. Jill, I see you've joined us. Would you like to present your work? Oh, uh, sure. It, it's very strange. Like my iPhone has no sound, and my oh, video, sure. and my and my computer has no video. Oh, very, very oh. bizarre. So oh, I um I actually um I I also do Instagram. Um. Oh wait. Join audio. Okay. Um. Oh, here we go. Um, I, I do Instagram. You gotta, you gotta yeah, you have to. Jill, Jill, shut off one of your connections. Otherwise, the computer. Barely, I have to go. Thank okay. you. I see you so next Monday. Thank you Monday. all. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Thank you for sharing. Bye. Bye. I don't know why. Sorry about that. Um, so I... I do Instagram. I'm actually a photographer, but lately since COVID, I've been doing watercolor for some reason. Okay. Um, so I don't know if I can I um, share on my Instagram. For you. It's up to you whether you want to see uh, uh, watercolors or, or my photography. You control the buttons. Show yeah. anything you like. Okay. Um, so... under share content. Uh, okay, I think I, I, I'm not able to share, so I'll just show you some of my watercolors. 
So um, this is one of the first ones that I did. Oh, nice. I, okay. I'm definitely, into, right now my photography is more abstract and, and so I started doing abstract watercolor. Okay. It has an architectural feeling to it. I like it. Thanks. Okay. Oh, they're yeah, little postcards. Yeah, yeah. I like the colors. Very vibrant. Oh, thank you. Very nice. I, start, I started doing variations of shape and color. That one's nice. I like all the blue. <laughs> thank you. Are you using watercolor paint or the pe the uh, pencils that turn into watercolor? Watercolor paint. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Oh wow! Nice. Mm. Um, I wish I could. Well, I'll do the last one. I'll show. Nice. Very, yeah, very nice. Thanks. I mean, it's, it's a little frustrating because I, I don't know how to do this on, um, on the phone, but I, I know how to share content on my computer, but I'm having some technological problems. Well, we saw them perfectly. I did. Yeah. Yeah, me too. That's a good point. I did too. Yeah. Oh, wait, here's a website. Um, I Oh, 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 I, I might be able to actually do this too. All right, can you see that? Yes. Yeah, that worked out really oh, okay. Well. Oh, yeah. So these are, these are some of my photographs. Mm. If you okay. click not now below, I think that Oh, oh, okay. Pink will go Thank like you. that. There we go. Oh, well, um, totally related to your thing. Yeah. Mm. Your photography is very painterly. It's nice. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, uh, these are the more abstract ones, so... Mm. Wow. Oh, wow. That's amazing. It looks like a, a reflection in the street. Like a Japanese painting. It does. You know, it's, it's, it, it, that's actually just the sidewalk. And, you know, I, it's just interesting to find various, uh, like paint, the way paint, sometimes they paint over things just for construction yeah. or paint over graffiti um, on the, the wooden. Um, Mm -hmm. plywood so I'm sort of drawn I'm just gonna show you some of my I like this okay. Oops. Yikes. how do I get rid of that okay. it's too bad. Uh oh uh oh I am totally screwed up here oh you're, you're seeing like everything here hold on a second let me get it's back uh, can you can you see that again? No, it has you, it's covered. You can't. Okay. Well, let you switch. Oh, oh well. Um, switch to the app. Oh, okay, wait. Can you see that? No, it's the same. Huh. Okay. It's tricky. We're all sort of getting used to the new technology, mm -hmm. but this is sort of how we try it and figure it out. It's like, you ever wonder how kids play video games and know where to go? It's because there are other kids say, hey, you go left there and you do that. <laughs> so we right. need to learn like that too. Um, well, I'm looking at it on my own phone, so I'm seeing it all. It's great. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh, but here we go. I can get out of this thing. You have, you have a lot of these wall uh, paintings. They're beautiful. You know, the, these shots of various walls. My God, they look like frescoes. I'm looking oh, at thank you. Hell's Kitchen, the blue wall. God, that is amazing. Anyway, it's yeah, great. Yeah, so I, I do, um, what I do, I'm sort of drawn right now to, to abstractions in nature. 
um, and also torn uh, posters. Mm. Mm. Um, Michael yeah. Bradford. Mm -hmm. Who's who's that? Wacky. Oh, oh, did you say torn or torn posters? Worn, yeah. Worn posters. Um, and also just some abstractions in nature. Um, you know, I look at walls, uh, look at sort of decaying walls and paint sort of chipping off of walls. Uh, and, and also just um, like I have another one of the rain with on a cracked mirror. Um, so looking at the interface of nature and also um, um, sort of man or woman's influence as well. Mm -hmm. Nicely said, Joe. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah, okay. You know, I've heard about your group and for years, and this is the first time I've actually actually been able to come to a, to a meeting. Very easy. Yes, I've been um, following Barry. He doesn't know this yet, but I think for over 20 years. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah, yeah. There was another uh, wonderful um, art professional, uh, and she, uh, I met her at Ace Gallery years ago, and she told me about artists talk on art, and I've always been following, and this is my first interaction. It's pretty exciting. Funny that we both had that happen today. Yeah. And what's nice is it's it's also you you are all very seasoned artists, which is nice to see because I've been involved in more in younger um, art scenes. So it's really nice to hear um, from more more seasoned group of people. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that that should be the new expression for old people. <laughs> <laughs> we all agree with that. Does that mean we're spicy? <laughs> well, I'm oh, I'm actually younger than I look. I'm actually 57, so. That's very young. Well, yeah. I think um, age is just a number because it's how we are and how we see things. Exactly. Age is just a number yeah. until your knees hurt. I'm probably what, Robin? Age is just a number yeah. until your knees hurt. Yes. That's, that's right. That's <laughs> right. Then it starts to mean something. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Very nice, everybody. This has been a pleasure. I'm going to share for a brief minute or two some of my work, sort of change hats from being involved with the ATOA. And the reason I do any of my arts, and I've been a gallerist and I've written about art, is because I'm an artist. And I did that when I was young. It's a passion that sometimes it played into my work, and most often it didn't. But that sort of made it so I became a gallerist or became a writer or well, one day put talks together and then got involved, thanks to Jack, who's sort of inviting me uh, to present something at the ATOA. But when, wow. I was, when I was younger, I did uh, ceramics, and I got back into it recently. So oh, wow. Hold it to the center. Oh, yeah. I can adjust the light. So uh, this is uh, a figurative piece a variation on the sort of Minkissi power fit figures. I studied a little and saw a little bit of African art and I like the objects. <laughs> the idea is you, uh, you're you not just making an object, but you're trying to make it with the spirit. So when, wow. I, when I make this, it's again, hearts combined, but there's a meditation was mentioned by some other artists here. This sort of a quiet approach, but a slight intention to maybe imbue it, uh, sometimes in some pieces. Otherwise, it's a geometric play. It's line. It's black and white. Um, is it ceramic? This is ceramic, low-fired, cone 06. OK. Yeah. It's, it's sort of hard to see, no question about it. I'm a rookie at showing these pieces. Mm -hmm. You can see the face. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I do very simple childlike lines and responses, but a lot of my lines are responding to lines around them. So it's a weird, oh. a lot of the dots are around the circles and the holes. So it's this fine line between I'm playing, but I'm playing within form and pattern. So it's not just random, and yet it looks random. Um, that's one ceramic. I did sort of teach myself the wheel while I was 
teaching kids ceramics at a camp, and I made this little piece. That's okay. the inside, uh, the edge, and the bottom. Not easy to see, Beautiful. but sometimes you look at a bottom and you can see it all. So mm -hmm. in essence, I knew to leave my edge. I created different spaces. Um, I also, on the side, I did something different. I went in and trimmed and made ridges in. So as I paint or do anything, I sort of, you do a little, and then you see an opportunity to do something else. And that's the path of art to me, it sort of opens as I go. And this was a piece that I did towards the end of the season, quite light, like you would expect someone who knew what they were doing. And I started just playing around and, you know, I enjoy it very much. I am primarily a painter. When I paint, I'll sometimes do things like this, but it's often quite different. Um, and I just wanted to share a little. Uh, uh, I think it's great when we all share. I hear bits of myself in everybody here. And I'm sure you, nice. you all hear the same. Um, it's a shared experience that we all do in isolation, that we all do uniquely. And yes, these times feeds that in us, but, and some of us can, are doing daily projects and can look and look and see anything and be inspired, but others need the bustle of the city. They need the catastrophe of this world to feed them and to be the event. Um, you can have viral death wasps attacking, no question about it. And I, I love that you brought it up. The title had fear in it. I once curated a show all about fear, really, really, and that's a very big part of our culture for the last 40 yeah. years, maybe 80 years, maybe more. Um, so you, you all hit on great points. I want to thank you all. This is Artist Talk on Art. Um, become a part of it. You just did it. Come again. Spread the word. We're a 5013C. We survive on your contributions. Um, you can go to our website. There's plenty of information about us and how to contribute if you like. I do see a question by Mitch. I like it. I see. I never have a hand up. Poor Mitch. Yes. This is a little uh, bit swollen. Yeah. Uh, now, our client services, is your name Amy? Yes, Amy Delaporte. And you look familiar to me, Mitch. Have we met somewhere over the years? I'm only from New York. I don't go out to, to California. Okay. Uh, I guess you just have a familiar look. I was actually in New York in September. Uh, my artist, Catherine Gould, who couldn't be here, she's with a patient, had a lovely exhibit at the Amsterdam Whitney Gallery in Chelsea. Well, I was asking because a lot of uh, the artists, a lot of people have exchanged as far as what their Instagram is. So share with us what your contact information is. Oh, thank you. Thank you for asking that. I recently got onto Instagram as Art Client Services, Amy Delaporte. Uh, that's D as in David, E-L-A, P as in Paul, O-R-T-E, uh, Art Client Services. And um, I have a web page that I did myself. It's a, it's a page, artclientservices.com. And um, I'm, I'm honored to be here and very excited that both Robin Walker and Robert Sherman, who I represent, could also be available. And Barry has let me know that he is going to have them do their presentations next Monday. And Barry very sweetly let us come on today to kind of get a feel for uh, what it's all about. And I, I really love this, Mitch. I think it's and Barry and Roberta. Thank you. Great. Now, really, join, tell other people about us because it's so great that it's not, we're not just doing this in, in New York, but, you know, throughout the country. And That's right. So, you know, more exposure, the better. And I'll definitely follow you on Instagram and check out. And you do the same. And great. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Thank I just you, I just wanted to say one thing. Um, the I'm a psychologist, and recently I was uh, I read an article about um, object relations, which is how we become autonomous and an individual with others, sort of in, in reflecting in, in sort of a mirror-like way. So I was kind of thinking what you were, th you know, what what was being said about we take pieces of other artists and we integrate that, and also inject our own personality 
So in some ways, you know, seeing the other artists or other artists in general as mirrors, and then we incorporate our own, um, our own uh, uh, things that we're interested in and appeal to us artistically. Thank you. Very nicely said. I just want to thank you all. Such a nice gathering. We're here every Mondays. Um, I want to thank the other board members that are not here. Peter Duhan is our programming director. He does a great job. We have more programming coming. Keep uh, an eye on our website. And of course, we have many other board mem members who have uh, chipped in with their time. You guys are what make it happen. Everybody presented a great story um, and a very interesting. Thank you so much. The ATOA, we thank you all. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you. Barry, and I like your sculpture. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Likewise. Good to see you, Jackie. I have one thing to say. I'm from Venice Beach, California, so you're in the same I think we're outnumbered. The, uh, us New Yorkers, you, you Californians are outnumbered. Right, and let's see, somebody's from, I was looking, to, is um, Robin still here? I'm here. Oh, because I was looking, uh, you are, but I also was for house in Los Osos, which is oh. right there. Oh, yes, Robert, Robert is up there. Robert, right. Yeah. Yeah, when I lived out huh. Yeah, small well, world. if you make it to this area, please look me up. Oh, well, if, no, if I ever get up that way, I certainly would be happy to look you up. You live in a beautiful community. You have great music. There's a church. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just a Robert, great Robert, what's your last name? You didn't put it in the chat. Sherman, S-H-E-R-M-A-N. Okay. You want Instagram? I, I thought the last name was iPhone. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's all of well, our last name. It, it would be so up to date. Right. <laughs> I would like to say the last word, and that is to you, Barry. Barry? Are you, do you hear me, Barry? I can hear you, yeah. All right, Barry, you've done a great job with all of these, and we all want to thank you so much. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. And Mitch, you should put your email address or your um, Facebook address on on the chat. Uh, I, Instagram. I did, you have an I, Instagram. I, I put it in. Um, I put it on the chat. Okay. okay everything as far as Facebook and Instagram, it's all visual arts, A R T S events with another S. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great week, everyone, and I look forward Thank to seeing you. you all again. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Next week. Bye-bye. Thanks. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.